Uh, also from Kyoto University and Singapore NTU. Uh, Professor Tosa has been assigned to be the cultural envoy of Japan, which basically means that for the past year, she has been traveling around the world like a touring rock star, <laughs> except that it's a rock star in media arts. And for those of you who saw the uh, exhibition that we had uh, an opening last week, uh, you could see her work and also she talked a little bit about it. What we're going to do today is actually extend her talk and really um, allow you to understand the background of what fascinates uh, Professor Tosa in relation to Japanese culture and beauty and the uh, ideas behind it that are very old and deep and the essence of a culture that came together from many, many years of being in absolute isolation. Probably the only culture that had that. So it's so deeply rooted and to see it emerge in a contemporary cultural context through work as she's presenting and all the roots around it is what she'll talk about. Um, after her lecture, we'll be joined by our colleague, Professor Erki Hutamo, who spends many year, many times in uh, Japan over the past decades. And he'll ad-lib a little bit about uh, how J Japanese culture has influenced his thinking and work. Uh, then we'll have a short presentation by Professor James Jimjewski, who's a nanoscientist and who has been working for the last decade with MANA, uh, one of the top scientific institutions in nanoscience and material science in SCUBA. Uh, also very influenced by Japanese culture. Um, and this discussion is going to be extended to you guys. Why are you interested or any experience you have so that we can all understand why Japanese culture is so interesting and mesmerizing like your work. So please welcome Professor Tosa. Okay, thank you very much for the very kind introduction, uh, Professor uh, Victoria Vesna. So um, today I am talking about looking for Japan, okay? so. Um, here is uh, this year's cultural envoys. Uh, this year means, you know, uh, 2016 year means uh, uh, 2017 until March, <laughs> okay? Many uh, different kind of uh, cultural aspect, graphic like designer or architect, or, you know, comedian and dancer or like this. So I am, uh, <laughs> this is uh, my world tour of the cultural envoys. And already yeah, it started from Europe and now United States. And then after the Los Angeles, I will go to the Asia, uh, Malaysia, Thailand, uh, New Zealand, like this. So in fact, uh, this tour starts from Kyoto. I'm living in Kyoto. And so uh, in last month, uh, last year, in this fall, uh, I delegated my artworks, digital artworks for Zen temple. It's called the uh, uh, Kenninji Zen temple in Kyoto. Kenninji Zen temple Kyoto is oldest uh, Zen temple in Japan. So this is a delegation of the ceremony. Uh, you know, uh, monk is, you know, very highest monk in, top monk in the Zen Kenichi temple. This is a dedicated, you know, Sansu ink painting. Mm. And this is a no painting, no drawing. This is a photography, digital photography. It looks like Sansu ink painting uh, manipulated by computers. And also this one is, you know, you, maybe already you are familiar, you know, Genesis on the monitor, for monitor on the other temple. 
And this is called a、uh, very special place called Tokonoma. Tokonoma is, you know, guest, guest room in a very important room. Usually, in the Tokonoma, put on the, you know, kakejiku scroll and some ikebana sitting, sitting. And the sitting people is, you know, monk and make a meditation, you know. And、uh, I am very interested about, you know, I、take out of the scroll, traditional scroll, and show to the、uh, Genesis like a digital scroll. And then Monk is very interested about this and then dedicated it. So, and then finally,、uh, top of the monk uh, priest uh, gave me the Zen word. This is,、uh, you know, usually, you know, this is a lane, you know, lane. Rain drop is rain drop the sound. And rain, usually, you know, they, it's, it's Genesis, you know, white ball, it's a, like a rain drop. But the rain drop is, a, you, you know, different shape. It's a, like a people. And a, there's a meaning of the, you know, chance operation like this. So, and then next start of the、uh, exhibition in London, County Hall. This is a county hall. This is a pretty previous in the city hall. And、um, first idea like this, you know, projection mapping, big one, but、uh, too much expensive. And then try to the inside the building. It's uh, like, uh, you know, this kind of showing. And、uh, projection mapping for rear projection,、uh, projection of the rear projection、uh, for three screen like this. This is、uh, each screen is a、uh, 200 inch screen. And then show this. And then this one is、uh, opening. And then,、uh, so, Consul、uh, General came to the give a talk.、Uh, this one also, you know,、uh, I de delegated the Zen temple's、uh, scrolls. No drawing. And several p h o t o g r a p h y of the explo <laughs> explosion of the flowers,、uh, like this. And then after that,、uh, I, I, I give a lecture at、uh, Goldsmiths、uh, University of London, like this. So, and、uh, in fact, do you know him? Him is、uh, my old friend.、Uh, his name is uh, uh, a very famous computer graphics、uh, specialist. And so, <laughs> and he invited me the. Uh, some talk and so. And then also, you know, lecture at、uh, Paris,、uh, Maison de Culture of the,、uh, Japan at Paris.、Uh, this is a, a director of the,、uh, this place of the give a talk, greeting talk, and the we are talk. And then next one is、uh, New York. Uh, this is a, a, Jap a Japanese embassy inside the building gallery. A very、uh, perspective of the showing. And then、uh, before I came here,、uh, we are showing at、uh, Newark at Singapore. This is a Japan Creative Center. It's a, like a Japan house in LA. Uh, showing to the many Japanese culture in there. And uh, uh, consul, consulate of the general, the official house, we went there and show, showing to the works. And also、uh, Ikan Gallery. Ikan Gallery is、uh, my art representative gallery. So, this is also a big exhibition in there.、Uh, each screen is a 200 inch screen and four, four screens. Like this, like this.、Uh, this is a Japanese traditional color using a Japanese painting pigment. Like this. And also, ah,、uh, uh, maybe your side, from your side, you know. Right person is, you know, owner of the Ikan Gallery, Mr. Ikan Sanada, and the middle person is uh, uh, vice president of the、uh, Global Art 
cultural program and director of the uh, Asia Society Museum in New York. Uh, he, in fact, he was a previous director of the uh, uh, Art Singapore Art Museum. And then here. <laughs> then, you know, uh, Professor Victoria Vesna uh, greeting talk. Uh, this, and also a Japanese consulate also came to here and give a talk, greeting. Uh, this is uh, Art Science Center, a uh, gallery. So, and then I talk about more detail of the culture. Traditional, you know, beautiful objects usually, you know, uh, very quite interesting yeah, because this is, uh, you know, uh, maybe at that time using a cutting edge technology, okay? And, uh, such as, you know, pyramid and also such as, you know, this is a big statue in Nara prefecture. I'm, I'm living in Kyoto. I have a many, ch many, many chance of the head of the you know, master of the traditional school such as, you know, Ikebana and you know, tea ceremony or the Japanese sweets. And uh, at that time, I am uh, very surprised, you know, they are not keeping, keeping of the same style. You know, they are changing, very changing, like uh, fashions, you know, depending on the uh, era, very changing their tradition. That's why they are uh, still, you know, uh, you know, alive in, in this now. This is a, a, their survival way. That's why, you know, because this, this, this kind of tradition could survive until now. While I was, you know, staying uh, artist fellow, you know, Shebris, MIT Boston, uh, 2001 to 2004, because, you know, in fact, I am a very, at the time, I am a very, very ignore of the Japanese culture. I don't like Japanese culture because I hate of the Japanese culture. <laughs> In fact, uh, that's why I moved to the United States and tried to the more success. This is uh, my, honestly, my opinion at that time, okay? And then try to the more study of the very American or European way or like this. <coughs> And, but uh, at that time, I, I am a very uh, understanding. I am a Japanese, you know. I have a Japanese culture also, you know. I cannot, you know, become to the, you know, uh, American or European, like, uh, you know, take a way and a different way, you know. And then, at that time also, you know, I am a very interested about uh, uh, Zen, Zen Buddhism. It is uh, because uh, it is, it's a very natural for me. And uh, at that time, you know, it is uh, in Boston. Boston have uh, many uh, Japanese tradition in there, Boston, at the Boston Museum. And uh, I am uh, interested about Zen philosophy. And uh, uh, it is a kind of uh, interactive art installation called Zenetic Computer like this. And the front of the icon using, uh, uh, people using, took a front of the icon and then they try to the drag to the screen and they make a, you know, something painting. And then it is, you know, in fact, a three-dimensional computer graphics and then they can move to the, you know, sub, uh, and walking in the computer graphics three-dimensional space. And then, uh, in fact, this one is showed at uh, MIT Museum and SIGGRAPH also. And also, I am uh, interested about showing at uh, you know, the real Zen temple <laughs> in Kyoto. <laughs> and uh, this is a very survive way for me because I am a very uh, afraid of that they cannot, <laughs> they don't like it. And, but uh, fortunately, uh, priest accept me for the showing the Zen computer uh, especially, you know, in fact, you know, in Japan, uh, Zen, uh, Zen lava is, uh, for young people, Zen lava is less and less, in fact. So, uh, 
that somehow you know uh, then priests you know su survive to the more catch you know young people so and then uh, you know i understand this is a kind of a new possibility way of the thinking of the culture using a cutting edge technology and then foreign country people also understanding and we are also more understanding and it's called cultural computing, and then um, make a book, uh, writing a book. So, and then after uh, almost you know ten years, fifteen years, ten years, uh, you know, after after the MIT, I come back to the Kyoto, and then I, I am also surprised, you know, even my you know media artists, and but uh, I. And my, I have, you know, cultural gene in Japanese, very Japanese traditional one. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, like this. <laughs> then, then I am uh, very interested about, you know, computing, uh, using eye cutting technology for express of the new type of the Japanese beauty. So this is a core of the, you know, Japanese beauty, five features. Uh, <coughs> Japanese beauty is surrounding, you know, simple and quiet surrounding wabi-sabi. And uh, also I showed to the, you know, last time, you know, compare of the US and Japan mm -hmm. like this. And some, you know, art, my artworks, you know, showing to the like this, you know, very simple and surrounding, but uh, very strong something strong, you know, atmosphere. And also, you know, uh, Japanese beauty is, you know, we have, uh, our culture is come from, you know, uh, China. And how, you know, relationship, relationship between uh, Asia and Japan. For example, you know, gardens. In China, uh, garden usually, you know, fill the water, okay? But it, it is coming to Japan, you know, we have uh, less than water, like, you know, rock gardens. But we, we uh, express, uh, describe of the water by sand, a sand flow. Uh, this is uh, my uh, example is, you know, my own artworks. It is a uh, uh, Yosu Expo, uh, International Expo 2012. Uh, in South Korea, okay. This is a very uh, environmental uh, uh, looking feature of the environment and the sea. And uh, this area, this this is at top of the screen is a special LED screen hanging on the uh, mall. And uh, I will show to the you know the dragons. And at the time, you know, I am very inspired from Japanese dragon, the temple of the top, you know, hanging on the paint. But uh, uh, somehow, you know, very, you know, Korea dragon also very different than Japanese dragon. And uh, I follow to the, you know, Korea dragon too. And also, at that time, very, you know, political point of view, not so good communication, uh, Korea and Japan. And then I never talk about Zen Temple come from <laughs> here. And then talk about more, you know, international recognize of the four god. Four god. This is the Asian saint. Uh, it's originally come from China, but uh, we use four god way. Uh, and also we can, this kind of things share of the uh, Korea. And or, or even North Korea share shared. And the third, uh, Japanese beauty is, you know, uh, our culture is very special because combine of the Buddhism and Shintoism. And for example, like this, Shintoism is like a en energy, big energy, uh, such as, you know, waterfall and fire and uh, thunder and wind and like this. And this kind of big energy, we afraid it, and then oh, there in the God. And this is a very traditional, very domestic of the you know uh, 
thinking way, and uh, and also a pair of the Buddha. Okay. And some example is work. Uh, this is uh, I am uh, very inspired from Limpa school, such as this is a famous you know thunder god and Doro thunder god and wind god, and uh, this is the beginning of the design, and so I, I also make uh, you know uh, this kind of theme uh, of the uh, thunder god and wind god video. I, I will show you. Uh, this is a uh, this work made by the high speed camera 2000 second per frame you cannot see the your naked eye and somehow you know try to uh, describe about uh thunder god atmosphere
it's a uh, thunderbolt. <laughs> so, and then we are <laughs> we are here next here. So next is you know Japanese beauty is uh, language you know Japanese uh, found you know minimum poem in the world it's called the haiku poem seven syllabus seven syllabus uh, five syllabus seven syllabus five syllabus uh, it's a very famous haiku called you, you know old pond frog jumping in sound of water by Basho Matsu. You know, uh, this is uh, our, you know, root of the very minimum, minimum of the uh, sense. <laughs> and also, you know, uh, all this, you know, story in the world, we, our, you know, root, our, you know, all very old person in the middle, you know, called uh, Shikibu, Murasaki, Murasaki Shikibu, uh, made a tale of Genji. It was 1008. It is hair and era uh, made a, you know, this kind of story. This kind of story is, you know, very love story, but in fact, you know, this kind of relationship is very politics relationship described using a love story. Then uh, next one is uh, Japanese beauty is capturing of the nature, such as ikebana. Okay. And then uh, I made a sound of ikebana. This is a uh, uh, not computer graphics. <laughs> this is a you know not computer generated one. And this is a you know a sound speaker. You know on speaker of the vibration, put on the rubber and put on a pigment painting pigment, and then uh, sound vibration, jump, other sound vibration, then jumping on the, uh, you know, uh, pigment, and then at that time shooting by high-speed camera, and then make uh, such as uh, san, ikebana like a shape, like this. And another one is, you know, iris, like an iris flower, and like a, uh, uh, you know, pink one is more you know, plum flower, plum, plum tree like this. And then I made, a, you know, this kind of using a shape and then using a color and then describe about the four seasons capturing. I think maybe already sound of Ikebana, you know, how many people looking at? One, two. <laughs> and, uh, Okay, a little bit I show you. Okay, and movement also very interesting. Um, just only. This is a sound of Ikebana Spring. It starts from Happy New Year. A oh, good timing. This is a Chinese Happy New Year today. Uh, recently, Chinese Happy New Year.
in fact, you know, it, it showed、uh, Singapore. And then、uh, I tried to the somehow Singapore color, such as this color called Pranakan color, somehow fit to the you know, spring part. It is a, like a, you know, night of the cherry blossom. It will be shown、uh, my cultural envoys in April, next April, show to the New York Times Square Midnight Moment. This is a, uh, this work is a previous、uh, mid moment showing, and next April, like this.、Okay. So, and finally,、uh, Japan beauty is, you know, Japanese design,、uh, such as, you know, textile, color, and form,、uh, floor form, and no theaters design, and kabuki play design also. Do you know this, you know, kasane, it's called kasane no irome.、Uh, kasane means、uh, gradations,、uh, like, uh, like uh, this part, you know, like cuffs, and here also. Sleeps also. And、uh, ah, so, and I, I use, uh, uh, I show you the, some interesting images. You know, this is, a, you know, before、uh, start of the panel, I showed you the several you know, art pieces. It's called New Work Genesis. This is a making Genesis. This is a very tiny world, in fact, 12 centimeters cube. World. But、uh, in fact, you know, this world, even so, we, uh, uh, I am trying to just, you know, ma macro lens, and it means a more small world, you know, five centimeters like this. So, this is、uh, how to make a, how to make a you know,、uh, shooting.、Uh, four people working together. <laughs> Each people have a spoil, and then <laughs> and then spoiled in the water in some liquid space. And,、uh, and then at that time, one people is shooting air gun like this. And this is a, you know,、uh, our, you know, in fact, you know, Genesis、uh, making way like this. So, and also, you know, I will show you the, some example of the、uh, showing. Kabuki, and also、uh, this is a, another one.、Uh, no theater. I am a collaborate with no theater's person, especially、uh, Kanze party persons.、Uh, the shite. shite. Shite means uh, uh, main, main actors. And usually, you know,、uh, no theater's actor is men only. And, but、uh, she, uh, he played a woman. And、uh, I will show you a little bit, you know, a、uh, movie for、uh, projection mapping to the Shite,、uh, main actors. Its title is, you know, Tale of Ise, not Tale of Genji. Okay? 
And then usually, you know, no shatter is very minimum art. And you know, they, you know, no shatter, uh, this, uh, this uh, description is not like real things. And then usually they love to the abstract. Uh, in fact, you know, no shatter is many rules. It is f uh, root of the no shatter. First time, you know, pray of the God. Uh, please give me, give us a more rain like this, you know, long time ago. And after that, you know, uh, Zeami, Kan Ami is a famous, you know, uh, Zen. Or oh, uh, Zen style, they made a Zen style, previous Zen style, and then they they uh, make a more style of the uh, no shatter. And in fact, you know, uh, no shatter is you know connected another world and real world. And you can see the corridor. Corridor is connected another world to the connect, uh, real world usually. This is a kind of, you know, very style of the theater. And then, you know, some, you know, uh, music person is appear. Music person, two person, and one person is, you know, sing a song. And this one is, you know, famous of the uh, play. Title is Izutsu. Izutsu is a kind of love story. Uh, Main actor is a woman. Woman, usually woman put on the mask. The put on the mask person is, in fact, you know, uh, another world of the person. It's it's like a ghost, okay? Without main person is a real world person. And then uh, she came. And usually, uh, backside is you know pine tree of the background, but at that time I will use uh, uh, you know water like this because izutsu is using a uh, you know a related of the water story. And then, you know, describe about her emotional inside, show to the uh, images. In fact, you know, uh, she loved to the uh, kind of, you know, a very higher person. Uh, it's a prince, prince. It's a, like a prince level of the persons. And then when she and the prince, very young, young time, you know, children, they are, you know, uh, play each other. And then become to the adult, they want to the marriage, but uh, uh, it it was uh, not not connected, not so good, successful.
Okay. This is a very <laughs> long, and then maybe I will stop it. Okay. So, and then back to the PowerPoint. So uh, after that, this kind of uh, several, you know, uh, Japanese features, you know, culture, uh, describe about the uh, new way, and uh, especially through the, this kind of project, I have noticed that I am positioned as a point of the long history as one of the successor of Japanese traditional culture. How about you know young people? Uh, have they noticed about this? Because I, when I was young, I was never talking, thinking about this. So, but uh, I am uh, very afraid of the. They might be think that uh, Japanese traditional culture is something old-fashioned, or uh, has nothing to do uh, with them. If they notice that they are one of the successor of the, their traditional culture, their root, I can expect the bright of the future for the culture of each country. Since I feel like this, I want to express these big uh, beauties such as you know, cutting, cutting huge technologies, uh, focusing, focusing natural phenomena uh, that exist, but are invisible, invisible in our eyes. For what the purpose to discover of our roots and its future? So finally, I show you the, some collaboration with uh, ISEMS. ISEMS is a system uh, cells, uh, you know, biological chemistry research laboratory, very uh, top levels in the world, and art collaboration. So this one. Uh, sorry, a little bit, you know, smaller, but hopefully understanding. This is a, <laughs> a chemical formula. You know, usually people, you know, young people very don't like, you know, chemical formula understanding very hard. And then we uh, work with, you know, chemical formula, the shape is, you know, imaginative of the, you know, shape, you know, uh, such as, you know, for example, um, Uh, chemical formula is connected. And then this is maybe more understanding, more interesting about uh, chemical things. Okay? And that's all. That's all my presentation. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> So now I would like to invite uh, Erki Fukutamo to give us a little respondent minute. Do you want to keep this slide on or a different slide? Do you have some slides or do you want no, to I just talk? Yeah. So whatever picture you want in the back uh, now, do you want this or something else? Mm. Or nothing? Oh, oh. How about this? That's fine. That's okay. okay. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> Thank you for the presentation and thanks for this invitation. I think I need to keep these comments rather short because of them in the interest of the time. So I, I can tell you that I have, um, I just counted, I have uh, known Naoko for 24 years. 
personally, <laughs> because of our involvement in this world of art and technology internationally. I think I first met Naoko at the SIGGRAPH conference in Chicago in maybe 1993, if, I, if I'm correct. But I also visited her early studio in uh, Machida, in uh, near Tokyo, uh, around that time. So the, it is very interesting for me to see the kind of also the evolution of uh, Naoko's work. There are many intriguing things there, and uh, and um, just two things which I find kind of kind of interesting is the fact that like Naoko spoke that her on the one hand her career has been very international. So like she was working in Boston for a long time and uh, also had this feeling that she didn't have to, so much to do with Japanese culture, Japanese cultural tradition. But then, then on the other hand, so, so in this work that we show, there is actually a strong link and connection. So taking traditional forms of Japanese culture and trying to kind of reinterpret these with these new means. And I think that this is a very interesting topic. So the other other topic that I find very interesting is that I um, used to know Naoko as a computer artist, as so so always working with computers, interactive computing, and and um, and this very stunning recent work, the Genesis, and uh, is is in a way taking a distance from to the computer. So the so what you see uh, actually does remind, in some sense, some, somebody might even think that it has been produced by some kind of uh, artificial life uh, algorithms using a uh, computer 3D environment. And it's as astonishing that this work uh, has been done with high-speed camera shooting natural particles, so liquids and, bur and, and flowers being exploded by an air gun and that kind of thing. So these kind of encounters and so on the one hand sort of like kind of tension between these but also encounters I, I think are very interesting issues. So the Japanese culture for a very long time has had to sort of like deal with this problem of like we say, Utsi and Soto, in, inside and outside. Uh, the Japanese cultural traditions on the, on the Japanese and island country, which used to be imagined by many countries to be at the far end of the world. And at the same time, the Japanese um, culture is, is uh, characterized by, by a very special uh, quality of curiosity. So speak, people speak, speak about the Japanese curiosity, which is not only curiosity to things that you see surrounding you, but curiosity from things that are much further further away. And, uh, and this curiosity early on found the form of this um, so-called rangaku, which was means Dutch studies. And um, I could give a very long speech about this, but I will just have, say a few words. So the, the cultural evolution of Japan has been very special in the sense that, that from the beginning of the 17th century all the way to, to 1868, Japan was relatively isolated from the rest of the world. So the, so the, the, so the Tokugawa, first Tokugawa shogun, Tokugawa Ieyasu, basically decided to close Japan uh, to actually protect it uh, from uh, external influence. And uh, this may, mainly represented at that point Jesuit scholars who try, were trying to in, in, uh, import Christianity to Japan. And so this uh, long period of uh, relative isolation from the rest of the world was a very special time because during those times there were relatively few this kind of warlike things. It was a, mainly a peaceful uh, period during which the Japanese society prospered, and uh, so 250 years. And um, <clears throat> that period also saw the um, saw the uh, development of a sort of like 
kind of wealthy middle class, so not only kind of like peasants and uh, and um, kind of a court culture out of which these things like um, the uh, Murasaki's the Kenji Monogatari originally came, but but a middle class which was actually able to create a very special kind of a cultural sensitivity, and this sensitivity has much to do with visual culture. So, so the uh, so uh, Japan is is characterized very much by visuals, color, shape. Um, so Eizo Bunka, which means a visual culture, what became a characteristic during those 250 years, in a super complicated and uh, super refined manner. So when Japan was forced to open its borders then uh, in the so 1860s, so that meant a very uh, conscious program from the part of the Meiji emperor to sort of like, um, sort of like turn Japan into a Western type kind of country. So by, imp by quickly learning all the knowledge of the rest of the world that partly had been left out from the Japanese society. And uh, many of these uh, Western specialists who were in, invited to Japan in the late 19th century, including the architect Joshi Kondor and many others, actually felt uh, parad in a paradoxical position because they felt that something special was being destroyed by the in incorporation of the Western technology and uh, Western literature and Western clothing and all these kinds of things. And uh, ever since that time, I think that the Japanese culture has been dealing with this, this tension, uh, sometimes with tragical political consequences, but culturally this, this uh, tension between these things that come from the outside and this very strong Japanese uh, sort of like internal tradition of visual culture and the visual imagination are those ingredients that that I think we 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 can sense. So anybody I think who visits Japan and I have spent much time in Japan for over twenty years uh, probably uh, senses the fact that Japan on the surface. At the first look, many places, many great cities can look very so sort of like international Western type of society with all the shops and department stores. But very quickly you understand that it is something completely different. So it is just a select surface. And when very quickly you see that the cultural logic, the curiosity, the ideas, everything is, is about something else. And I think that this is one of the uh, strengths of the Japanese culture. So the idea that there is no easy way between uh, of, of sort of like mixing uh, sort of like together that that tradition that comes from the times of isolation and even even earlier from the Heian era, Heian era um, court culture, uh, and then these these incredible in infomaniac Western influence. So the Japanese really want to know everything about the Western culture. So uh, in Japan I can find specialists who can talk about early Finnish punk rock. Uh, that has been forgotten by the Finnish people. But the, but the Japanese, there are always are some people who know everything about like my background in, in the Turku Finland playing punk rock, you know, in the 70s and that kind of thing. So that's incredible uh, sort of like info, infomania and curiosity to watch everything meets in the best cases this Japanese tradition. And I think that this is to me what, what Naoko's work is trying to do, sort of like come up with this kind of links and connections, basically like like using a, already a kind of a long, long career of experience on both sides of this Utsi and Soto divide. Thanks. Next, we're going to have a scientific point of view, someone who spent also 20 years, 30, going to, 30 years going to do that. I don't have much to say, actually less than Erki, but I have been actually going to Japan for, yeah, about 30 years, and also uh, visited Kyoto University and 
um, played with the Zen computer. It was very fun. And one thing, uh, I really love Japan, of course, and I love, you know, the Zen Buddhism and, and the nanotechnology and all these things. But one thing I've sort of understood about Japan is the more I go, the less I understand about Japan. <laughs> so, you know, I go maybe, uh, I go about five times a year to Japan. And every time I come back with a new level of uh, non-understanding of what I thought I understood in the past. And everything in Japan is different, it's weird. So you take it, you, the books, they, they read them from the back to the front and from the, the right to the left. And then you go to the door and the, you turn the key and to open the door in Japan, you have to turn the key the other way. So everything is opposite. Um, anyway, it's, a, it's an interesting, it's like a Zen experience in the sense, the more you try to understand, the less you understand. And the final state is understanding nothing. And that's probably the moment, the Satori moment in your life, right? When you realize you understand absolutely nothing at all after studying it for 30 years. Anyway, regarding the, this marvelous work, you know, um, I think it's also interesting because the, the Zen computer piece was very much computers and everything, and now we see no computer. No computer. The computer disappears after all this work programming computers. And I find it also fascinating because uh, what I see in this, be this beauty, this beautiful thing is, is also to do with self-organization and emergent phenomena in complex systems. And if we try to actually model complex systems in, on a computer, even the Reekin K computer, it's practically impossible to model very complex systems. So in a way, this piece is the right approach. It's actually to look at that complex system as a beautiful system and, and, and forget the computer completely. But it is a beautiful combination of, the, of technology and, and, and art, amazing. And it reminds me some ways of uh, you know, the spatial temporal dynamics we see, that, or artwork. It reminds me also of the early days of the scanning tunneling microscope when we first looked at landscapes. These were more static, but static landscapes of atoms and molecules that no one had ever seen before. It was a new vision. And so these um, beautiful pieces, of, these beautiful um, 4K video works are, uh, they, they somehow connect to the mind. They connect to the mind in terms of the stuff we cannot understand, we, the complexity we cannot understand. So again, uh, you know, after watching it, I realize I understand nothing. <laughs> and so with that, I think that's maybe enough to say, right? I understand nothing, but it's uh, beautiful. <laughs>So, uh, Prof. Tosa explained you about uh, Japanese culture, and uh, most of you think that Japanese culture is very special, and that there is a lot, lot of you know difference between Japanese culture and West <coughs> Western culture. But what I want to say is a little bit 
different. So I want to look at it from a little bit different aspect. And <clears throat> I want to say uh, not only Japanese culture, but more generally Asian culture. So if we want to compare Asian culture and Western culture, of course you can understand it's a logic versus emotion. Uh, so, so this is one thing I want to explain. But at the same time today, what I want to say is that there is very interesting uh, trend. Asian, uh, no, 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 Western countries, the behaviors of people in Western countries are more and more <laughs> becoming similar to those of Asian countries, the, those of Asian countries. So we call, I call it, I want to call it Asianization of Western world. So today I want to explain a little bit about it. <clears throat> so <clears throat> after, you know, I, I stayed in, lived in, in Singapore for eight years, and there I, I, I got an idea. Wow, more and more, the behaviors of people all over the world are becoming very similar, especially in the case of communication behaviors. As you can see by these photos, people like to communicate using their, uh, with their intimate ones. you probably using <coughs> uh, iPhone or something like that. Anywhere and anytime, regardless, regardless of time and situation. That is one thing. And another very similar <coughs> phenomenon we found, that, that is taking pictures. Until probably 10 years ago, at the you know, sightseeing spot, only Japanese people used to take photos. But nowadays, people all over the world, they like to take photos. So people like to take photos anywhere and anytime. So is there any, is there a relevant way of expressing this phenomenon? I dare say formal behaviors and private behaviors are merging together. So <clears throat> until recently, we try to separate formal be behaviors and private behaviors. This means that it is not so good for us to do, to carry out private behaviors in formal situations. But as you, you can notice, anytime, anywhere, even during you know, uh, conferences, the informal dinners, many people are watching their mobile phones and, and doing communication. That, that is private behaviors. So doing private behaviors in a very formal situation, that is becoming very, very popular very, very common all over the world. In Japan, we have a very good word to express <clears throat> these two formal and private uh, behaviors. Honne is a private opinion. Tatemai is formal opinion. And Japanese people have been for a long time accused that uh, uh, <clears throat> Japanese people have two principles, double principles, honne and tatemai. But that is not true. Actually, people all over the world have formal and informal opinions or behaviors. But the problem is that in Japan, they confuse many people, even now. <coughs> this is a, a former prime minister, <coughs> Aso-san. Uh, very, <coughs> many times, they confuse Right, so th this means that it, when in a formal situation they express very private opinion or something like that. But interesting is that this is happening not only in Japan but in other world. Here, <coughs> I want to say, I go back a very, very long time ago to, to uh, uh, Greek era <coughs> where you know, the famous Plato uh, first <coughs> indicated the separation of you know, logic and emotion. So, so he, he compared human with uh, uh, drive, one driver and two horse. One driver is it's a lo logos. Logos means uh, logic. And two horse means one is uh, passion, the other one is a desire. What he said is logos was, should be admired as the basis of human intellectual behaviors. On the other hand, passion, emotion, uh, <clears throat> It has two, two parts, right? In instinctive desire 
and passion. Passion is okay. It's, it's very closely connected to art. But on the other side, instinct the desire should be suppressed. That, that was his you know, <coughs> uh, <coughs> notion. And that was the beginning of you know, uh, Western philosophy. So by Plato, the separation of logos and pathos started. But interestingly that in Asia, this did not happen. Right? In Asia, even from a long time ago, uh, <clears throat> famous philosophers emphasized the unification of mind and body, human and nature. So we did not have the notion such as logos and pathos or logic. We did not have the concept such as logic. It's very interesting. Okay, <clears throat> uh, then in the Western, Western world, uh, the printing technology came in 15th century. And this, uh, in one sense, accelerated the separation of logos and pathos. And later, in, in, it's in 1960s, the famous, the well-known Marsha McLuhan <clears throat> uh, said, declared, uh, said, indicated the same thing. Uh, printing technology, invention of printing technology contributed to the making of typographic man. Wow, wow, it's very interesting. And at the same time, he anticipated that media. At that time, it, 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 the media indicated by him was TV. But he was so clever. He, in one sense, anticipated the coming of network era. And he, and he said, Media will make people more emotional. So he called it a global bridge. But most of people even now misunderstand this. By global bridge, they say that the world is globalized. Everybody is connected. That's true, but at the same time, what he wanted to say is that in this village, people behave emotional. The, the behavior of, of people will become more and more emotional. That is another thing he wanted to say. So what, what is happening now is after long years of separation, logos and pathos are approaching and even merging together again. So that, that, <coughs> that actually there are two main reasons that initiated this. One is telephony and the other one is movies. But today I don't want to say this <clears throat> because of time. So now, <clears throat> anyway, we, are, we live in the era of globalization. But still, <clears throat> there are many people who don't understand actual meaning of globalization. So what is meant by globalization is actually it's a westernization. Let's introduce more technologies from US countries, from Western countries, and even culture to try to introduce uh, behaviors, a way of behaving, a way of thinking from Western countries. That, that's, that is uh, one trend. But at the same time, uh, what I want to say is that there is another trend, merging of emotion and logic. That is another <coughs> trend. And I, I want to call, it, <coughs> call this trend agenization. So by organization, what I mean is the behaviors of Western people is approaching, are approaching and becoming very, very similar to those of Asian countries, <coughs> the <coughs> Asian people. So <coughs> the important question is, what would be the future of a society? So one, <coughs> one big <coughs> fear is that our, so, so if, uh, emotion and logic <coughs> would be moved, uh, our behaviors might go back uh, to, 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 to those era, ancient era. And actually, it is happening. It is happening right now. That, that is why so many people, you know, <coughs> dislike him. Not only what he wants to say, he wants to do, but probably the way of his behaviors, his facial expression and his, you know, <clears throat> blabbery, yeah. the way of his speech, that is very, very emotional, right? So, so the, all, already the trend of our going back to the era of 
to the era where we were animals. That is happening. So we have to stop this. To, what, to do this, probably I think one thing we have to do is to, 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 to look at our ancient era, era, where we behaved very, very elegantly. And interesting is that in, in uh, Heian era, 1,000 years ago, we had a very <coughs> good media called Waka, uh, Japan short poem. And as you know, <coughs> Uh, there is a very good similarity between Waka and Twitter. Waka is a very short <coughs> message, and people, at that time, people used to express their emotion using Waka very, very frequently, especially among men and women. <coughs> and again, again, interesting is that Trump is using Twitter as a very efficient way of expressing his opinion. But the problem is that the content, content. So <clears throat> in the era of Heian era, <clears throat> people used to do a very elegant communication using, using Waka. But nowadays, for example, Trump, what he's trying to do using Twitter, it's, you know, it's very direct uh, you know, way of doing things, not, not elegant. That, that is a problem. So we have to learn, probably, uh, from the era, uh, <coughs> Heian era, where people to communicate each other in a very elegant way. For example, you didn't work out. How, well, how they could do this or something like that. If we could do this, probably in the future, in the near future, we will <coughs> live, in, live in the way, in the similar way as in the, uh, era, in the Heian era. But with new media, right, such as iPhone, or <coughs> this kind of thing. Probably I think that, that is what uh, <coughs> we have to do. So we are in a very <coughs> important moment where we, we would go, probably to go back to the era of animal, or we, we will go to the era of elegant communication or something like that. Okay, okay that, that's what I wanted to say. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you so much. What you just said reminded me of that famous photograph of Steve Jobs in an empty room. And so many people in Silicon Valley uh, were influenced and learned from Zen and from Buddhism. And uh, it also made me think of the um, idea of the mind-heart in Buddhism, where there's so much that's going on through the intellect, but when it's the heart speaking, it's between people. So I'm just uh, wanting to express a great thank you to Professor Noako Tosa for coming here, and uh, Ryohei Nakatsu as well. Um, it was great to get feedback from an uh, art historian, Erki Huktamo, and a scientist, uh, nanoscientist, James Jimjewski. Um, so you have an engineer, Ryohei Nakatsu, from all points of view. And this is, to us, in Art Science Center, the essence of what we're trying to do, to connect the north-south campus and the east-west cultures. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you to everybody. Together?